Hello and welcome to Premier Scene. I'm Nicola Johnson and we're here to talk to the director, Anthony de Blasi, about his film, Missionary. I had the pleasure of seeing your film this morning. Excellent. And the first thing that struck me from watching it was the need to belong to something. Yeah, yes. I think, and Mitch Ryan did such a good job kind of portraying that need to belong. It's, you know, a lot of people, and something about the missionaries when I talk to the writers about is that that's really what a lot of that stems from is going on a mission because going on a mission for the the Mormons is you know sometimes you get a lot of pressure from your families most of them don't want to do it you know they're at an age where they want to explore and stuff but it is it's like it's like going to camp and finding people that are similar to you it's it's finding a purpose and, and that's what the characters really need because it's it is it's like boot camp it's like you know you pay for it um, but you know, you find, you build bonds, and you get to meet a lot of people, and sometimes you get to travel the world. So it's it is it's a lot of reason why people join the military. You know, it, it gives them an opportunity to belong to something. And I thought that it was shot extremely cleverly because you've got all these, tra you've got the bikes, the cars, the train, everything moves forward, and then you've got the scrapyard where things are being crushed and broken down. And to me, that helped build the tension. You just knew something was going to you know break at some point yeah that was uh, definitely an important part of it um, kind of the Mormons and the bicycle is, is a very iconic thing and that that motion and, and traveling towards something and then deconstructing it and breaking it down and, and that the car crusher was something that you know was very important to me and it, it, it does it creates that like subtext of tension um, you know, when you're literally watching things crush under metal, and, and that's what's happening to this this woman too. How important for you was it to try and have a sense of a sense of hope, especially at the beginning of the film, because there's such sensitivity within the lovemaking scene mm -hmm. in the beginning. It was beautifully shot, and Thank then, you. of course, when he looks back, it's much more violent. Yeah, I I think for my biggest challenge in the in the film is that. People have a slightly negative view of missionaries or Jehovah Witnesses, or like people, people that solicit at your door in general. You're like, leave me alone, right? So, f for me, I thought it was important to, well, first I got to make people like these characters and being as genuine as possible with with what they're saying. They're not just preaching. They're not preaching like the Lord. You know, they're saying very realistic things like. I want your son to do well at a football game. Like, how, how do you not relate to that? And how, how can you demonize that? And she's like, so there is this kind of gentle connection um, of her genuinely not falling in love with the guy. I don't think it was ever love for her, but falling into a security with him and seeing... He's very angelic, also yeah. Similar to the, the actor that plays the husband in Luke's. It, yeah, to Kip Pardue, yeah. There's, there's there is that similar. The blonde, the blue eyes. It is the the hair, and it is. It's an angelic look, and and it, it does bring a purity, especially when they're dressed in white and stuff like that. And we collaborated on a, on a, our first film together, and that was called Casadega, which is going to be released uh, theatrically in the states in October. Yeah. So yeah. And in terms of getting this project up and running. Um, what was your involvement in that? Uh, well, I uh, raised all the funds for it. Uh, we, I did that for Casadega as well as for Missionary. It was kind of a, uh, a lucky circumstance. You know, we jumped basically right into the second film. I pitched it to the investors. They liked it. And I said, Anthony, you want to do another one? And am I right in saying that it was your idea to base it with the back, backdrop of the Mormon religion? Or uh, Yeah, it was uh, my idea and Bruce Woods. It's a really clever um, aspect of the film, actually, because when he turns up, he's so angelic looking, yes. and then of course it spirals out of control. But it was just fascinating to watch you it. Know, originally, uh, we weren't going to go full on missionary, Mormon missionary. It was supposed to be a slasher, but uh, once we decided to go with the Mormon missionary, then it became uh, more of a dramatic thriller. It's a real psychological journey. I mean, you actually do feel so much sympathy for him, yeah. but also, of course, for the mother and the husband and the son. So one minute you're feeling sorry for the mother, and then you're feeling sorry for him. And yeah. Well, you really do feel sorry for uh, uh, Kevin Brock, because uh, he is one of the characters that has the strongest dramatic need, and he's willing to kill for it. You know, I mean, in a sense, he's just, he is an innocent, and he was kind of taken advantage of. Um, but of course, because he's a bit, uh, 
he has a bit of a mental illness, he takes it one step further into the danger zone. Sadly, is, in a way, was there a social statement within this movie, do you think, of people being le left and not being helped? People that are out there lonely and looking for something? Well, I think every film makes a statement, you know, and it, it might make several statements. And yeah, I would say absolutely there is something to, to be said about that. Just one last question, if that's sure, okay. Yeah, Just in terms of the casting, I mean, the cast was fabulous, yes. especially a young boy. I mean, an, what an incredible performance. Were you involved in the casting? Yes, yes, I, were, I was. Um, we, were all, we were very concerned about casting the young boy. I mean, as you never know, um, we had a bunch of boys come in, and finally when he came in, uh, he, he did the audition. We were like, ah, oh, yes. I mean, you, you kind of have those moments periodically. Same, same thing for our, our Whitehall. You know, he, he came in, and we're like, oh, my God, that's our Whitehall. With our, uh, with our Kevin, we and our Catherine, we weren't quite sure the direction we wanted to go, but because we, we really wanted an interesting pair. We wanted that chemistry, and uh, we wanted the innocence, you know, and, but we also wanted uh, Kevin to be kind of menacing it when, he, when he does flip that switch. So once we found all those little pieces, it really came together to make a nice ensemble piece. It absolutely did. I mean, the audience reaction today was you could hear pin drop at one point, and then, of course, everyone was in laugh, fits of laughter yeah. because the humor is right. so amazing. There's so much humor in the film. Yeah, I, I was a bit concerned at first because it was so quiet. I was like, oh, you know, we'll see how it's uh, being received. But um, I, I was told that the uh, British audiences are a little bit more refined. Uh, so, yeah, but then... But then in the moment where he's in the bed with her and he, the audience actually realizes how crazy he is, you know, that was a nice uh, revelation for, for me to hear everybody hear that. His performance is very subtle and yes. you believe it. And that's yeah. the most important thing. You actually believe what's happening. And I was really happy with Anthony you know, bringing that performance out of him because we didn't want that kind of um, just all of a sudden switch. We wanted a, a, a gradual build so then when he does switch, it doesn't seem awkward. Come <laughs> on.